I'm actually in Melbourne for the finals of the Australian Open and I wanted to check out the museum at just a casual visit and what do I get? I get this totally mind-bending retrospective of Victor and Rawl entitled Fashion Artists which gives a comprehensive summary of their revolutionary career as two of the most brilliant, subversive, daring and original minds in the history of the fashion industry. This exhibition, it's literally one of the best ones in any category, fashion, design, art, that I've experienced in the last 18 months. It beats the last Costume Institute exhibition, Manasseh Machina, hands down by 300%, with the potency of the intellectual content plus the quality of the design and exemplars assembled. It's possibly the best fashion retrospective I've attended ever. What struck me the most about Victor and Rolf after visiting this retrospective was the combination of factors at play in most of their work. They combine huge, huge, very daring conceptual ideas with a reverence for tradition, an intense dedication to craft, and a continuous striving for innovation. In their 1999 haute couture presentation, entitled Russian Doll, they featured nine pieces of clothing, one successively layered on top of the other on a living doll, a single model who they dressed directly on the runway to simulate the concept of a matryoshka doll. Considering that Victor and Rolf's clothing resembles conceptual art much more than conventional fashion, it came as no surprise to discover that one of their favorite themes is fine art. That's not to say, however, that every collection themed around this idea has been a success. Take, for example, the recent collection called Wearable Art, which featured framed artworks converted into ostensibly wearable garments. It was probably too literal. In comparison, their recent haute couture collection named Performance of Sculpture is a tour de force of white cotton piquet cast into surrealist sculpture. Art is one of their favorite themes, but humor is quite possibly the defining hallmark of their entire of. This humor can take the form of subtle subversion. For example, taking the red carpet literally and making it into a dress. Or it can become an outright gag by taking the bedclothes and making them into, well, bedclothes. For their flower bomb collection, they took the feminine icon of the ribbon bow and literally gift wrapped the body from head to toe. The fact that Victor and Rolf incorporate humor into virtually all of their work is testament to their fearlessness as designers, daring to defy our conventions and expectations at every turn and phase of their careers. My two favorite pieces from the retrospective come from the Cutting Edge Couture Collection of 2010. It was a time of slashing budgets and cutting corners, so Victor and Rolf literally took a scalpel to venerated silhouettes like ball gowns and tuxedos. The sheer beauty of these two pieces is obvious, but what's more impressive is that Victor and Rolf had to overcome major technical challenges in order to achieve the desired effect. But this is par for the course for Victor and Rolf, who have always been dedicated to continuous innovation, as well as exquisite traditional craft, in order to execute their big avant-garde ideas sometimes to unforgettable and even paradoxical effect. By refusing to bow to the dictates of commerciality and even highlighting the absurdity and artifice of the fashion industry, Victor and Rolf have become unlikely heroes of a generation who can now only dream of such unbridled creativity and originality.